Welcome to, welcome to our webinar, Empowering Library Leaders and Diversity Worldwide, the European Experience, presented by EFLAS Management of Library Association Section, MLIS, in collaboration with the New Professional Special Interest Group, MPSIG. We are proud to present the first event in our, the second event in our webinar series to empower new library leaders worldwide and foster diversity within the profession. Over the course of six webinars, library associations from countries in each IFLA regional division will present opportunities they provide for new and senior librarians, including leadership opportunities and how these library associations are fostering diversity within the library profession and leadership. The webinar format includes interactive opportunities to engage attendees in conversations about those topics that will elicit best practices and recommendations about the needs of new and senior professionals. The insights gained from these webinars will then inform and enrich the MLIS open session at the uh, World Information Library Congress in 2022 in Dublin, which will focus on the same team. Uh, this webinar series is connected to the EFLA strategy three, connect and empower the field, specifically 3.2 support virtual networking and connections. We will develop a series of continuous collaboration in the library field through virtual networking tools that enable every librarian to be involved and engaged in a global conversation. And 3.3, empower the field at the national and regional levels. Our agenda today includes library associations sharing their resources about leadership and diversity. Interactive conversations Attendees, please join an interactive meeting room. Then we return to the main webinar room to hear from seasoned and veteran librarians new to leadership, sharing information about their experiences and path to leadership. I would like to thank the chair and each one of the members of our section MLAS, supporting this effort and dedicating their time and energy to make these webinars happen. Big thanks to the leadership of IFLA New Professionals uh, Special Interest Group and their convener, Magdalena Gomolka, for supporting the webinar technical aspects and many logistics. Your collaboration is valued. Before we continue, please turn off your microphone and camera during presentations. Note that this meeting is being recorded. Now, I would like to ask Magdalena Gomolka, convener of the IFLA New Professionals uh, Special Interest Group, to join us for a special session. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome on our webinar. We would like to know uh, where are you from? And so let's uh, use the Mentimeter platform to find out, please go to menti.com website and use this code 99518268. And also you can grab your phone and just take a photo of this, of this uh, QR code. We will see uh, countries and where are you now. So one minute to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have now uh, participants from Germany, from Swiss Switzerland, from Croatia, from USA, from Puerto Rico, Latvia. Hello, welcome. <laughs> so many countries are with us. UK, Norway. Great. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's changed. Oh. 
Great. Oh, so we have also Poland here with us, Zimbabwe. So many, many countries and uh, from many continents. So thank you. Thank you very much for uh, using Mentimeter.com and welcome on our webinar. So, oh, <laughs> it's changing a lot. <laughs> okay, so thank you. I'm uh, Loida, microphone is yours. Thank you, Magdalena. And now our speakers. Our speakers today are Joe Cornish, CILIP's Chief Development Officer from the United Kingdom. Ms. Hilde Van Kiel is the director of uh, KU Leuven Libraries in Belgium. She's also the chair of the LIBER Leadership Working Group that organizes on behalf of LIBER an emerging leadership program in the LIBER journeys. Mara Jacobson, Chief Librarian in the Library Development Center of the National Library of Latvia and President of the Lat Library Association of Latvia. Francisca Weber is a librarian at the University of Applied Sciences in Cologne, Germany. And since 2014, she volunteers for the German Professional Association for Librarians, BIB. And now we will start welcoming Joe Cornish. And this first section is about library associations speaking about leadership opportunities and how they are fostering diversity. Joe. Thank you so much. I'll just share my screen. Yes, we see. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So uh, um, as already said, I am Jo Cornish. I'm Chief Development Officer for SILIP, the UK's Library and Information Association. And I'm really delighted to be here today to talk about leadership and diversity. We consider leadership and leadership development one of the four most important strategic contexts for our work. Um, and this has been captured within our new five-year plan, which is called We Are SILIP, which was launched this year. We know that we are working with an aging workforce in the UK and that the cliff edge of retirement that we're facing means there's a real danger of knowledge loss and leadership experience. On the other hand, of course, this creates huge opportunity. It creates a space for new and aspiring leaders to step forward into. We want to turn our information managers into information leaders. And to do this, we need to make sure that we're giving them the skills and the confidence to be ready. I don't propose to have all the answers, but I'm certainly happy to share the work that we have done in recent times. One of the key principles for us is, make, is to make it clear that leadership is something that can be exhibited at all levels, that it's not attached to seniority of role or length of service. We can all be leaders. When rewriting the SILIP definition of professionalism in 2019 and the revised skills standard, the SILIP Professional Knowledge and Skills Base, PKSB, in 2020, I made that really explicit, that we support leadership at every level. The professionalism definition, which is on the screen now, was designed to be open and inclusive. We wanted to remove any perceived barriers to the profession, being clear that if you have the knowledge and the skills and that you're committed to learning, development and ethical practice, you are part of the, our profession. Now, we know that barriers and perceived barriers disproportionately affect people with protected characteristics. So that open and inclusive language really matters. Taking steps to remove those barriers can uh, help redress some of the imbalance. As does developing robust, alternative, credible pathways into the profession. And a big step for us has been the work uh, we've been doing on apprenticeships. This helps to unlock opportunity. And we've seen huge value coming through from our apprenticeship scheme. The, it's very early days in terms of data, but the, the data we're seeing initially is that it is starting to show that we are attracting people in from a wider pool, a more diverse pool of talent into the profession. So it's really encouraging. Um, I hope to have uh, a bigger data set to, to share more widely um, as soon as possible. There are 
Another approach is through skills development, uh, and there are several leadership courses that we've supported, developed and delivered. One of these was to work specifically with health librarians to run a leadership academy. Um, this included work-based activities, classroom-based activities, and creating a peer support network for them. And that was commissioned by a, a major employer in the health sector to meet that recognized need. They could see that there was this uh, stuck middle, middle managers that they wanted to progress forward into leadership um, vacancies, but who were lacking the confidence or the skills to uh, all the experience to take that forward. That course, that program was really successful and many of the participants in that course went on to secure those senior leadership posi uh, positions, showing the long term value of that. And in delivering that course, it led SILIP to really consider the value of cohort based leadership development, firstly with a course that we provided directly. And then more recently with a program for public libraries called Leading Libraries that we were delivered in partnership with our colleagues at Libraries Connected. Now, this course was designed specifically to support leadership and development for an ethnically diverse cohort. And the format that we used worked really well. Um, we used a format called Quads, and there were 15 library authorities that participated in that program. And each of those authorities had to put forward four members of staff, the quad. Now that had to include the head of service. The idea was to get that absolute senior endorsement and buy-in. The next person was what was called the emerging leader. This is someone who was already quite skilled in leadership, but that they saw as um, the future leader really of the service and that they really wanted to upskill them and have them ready um, to step forward into those very senior roles. And then the last two positions were what were called powerful talent. So these were two individuals from anywhere within the organization that had that spark, that had that talent that was ripe for development and support. Um, and throughout the whole recruitment process of this program, we were looking for people from diverse backgrounds. Now, this format worked incredibly well. They used um, action learning sets, reflective practice, uh, and we also created a set of legacy resources coming out of this program. And um, what we seen is um, it, it was hugely effective and we did this grand finale presentation and it was incredibly inspiring to see the confidence of these participants growing and seeing their applied learning going forward and the value they were adding to their services. Now the formal evaluation on that project is still being concluded but anecdotally we're definitely seeing signs of increased confidence and even within the program many of them were promoted or moved on to new jobs testament to what how much they were taking from that program. And we also have those open access lead legacy resources or learning resources. Um, and by making these resources open, we hope to increase inclusion and accessibility. One example is the Carnegie Foundation Stepping Into Leadership uh, Learning Resource, which is the one that is on the screen there for you. And this is available now. And then the learning resources from that leading libraries program I was just talking about uh, are on their way. So we're in the process of, of developing those and getting them up online. And of course, people can access these in their own time. It's part of that process of removing barriers and perceived barriers. Um, people can access them for free um, and uh, have control of their own learning. Within our core offer, there are elements that we can include as part of being a member association, as part of that offer, and also under our Royal Charter to support leadership and diversity. We have uh, over 30 different member networks and groups, and these groups can act as a proxy leadership structure for those who might not be getting the opportunity within their existing role. Um, it gives people the opportunity to explore new roles, for example, chairing, treasurers, um, events or organizing, marketing, um, data analysis, um, all of which give people the opportunity to build skills, knowledge, understanding and networks. And this can unlock confidence and opportunity to develop leadership, which can be applied in and out of the workplace. Our professional registration, uh, and specifically in this case, I want to talk about our chartered fellowship. 
um, provides opportunities. It enables leadership development. Um, our fellows need to demonstrate in their um, application that they have uh, either um, made a significant impact and or an outstanding contribution to the profession. And then that's assessed by a panel of their peers. So once again, the focus is on that self-directed development, which really helps people um, tap into their own interests and passions and unlocks their confidence, their opportunities in the work that they're doing. It helps them recognise uh, and gain recognition for that. And when they complete that, when they gain their fellowship, they also have, a, you know, literally have a bag of recognition, a badge of recognition with their post nominals uh, that they have made a difference to their profession, that they are a leader. One of the important developments over recent times has been creating a safe space and support for diverse communities, places where people can come together and seek understanding, peer support and uh, progress their careers. Um, for example, we've got diversity networks looking to provide support to our colleagues with disabilities and those from the LGBTQ plus communities, as well as allies groups as well. Our newest project is to explore a women's forum. Uh, we know from our research in the UK that we have a 78% uh, female profession, but that men are twice as likely to hold senior positions. And the women's forum is intended to create a supportive and practical space to build and encourage leadership and development for women. So in summary, our intention is to, uh, for the future is to continue to build upon this foundation. Uh, I want to create a more formal and strategic framework to draw upon this work and take it forward to the next level. And um, having the opportunity to be here today to hear about other people's best practices is wonderful for me. And I, I really thank you for the opportunity to be part of this today. I'll hand back at that point. Thank you, Joe. It's great to see how CILIP uh, strategy uh, includes uh, different aspects of um, uh, diversity, including this one that you mentioned about uh, making sure that the ethnically diverse uh, uh, are reached um, in each one of these efforts and the cohorts try to be you know, very inclusive in that sense. Um, so that's great, thank you. And now we continue with Ms. Hild Van Kiel. Welcome. Welcome to you all. I'll try to share my screen. And this is the one I need. Yes, it works. Yeah, I've gone one too far. What I would like to talk about is the Liber leadership programs. Um, and um, I first want to place a little bit what Liber is. Liber is a European research library network. Um, we have more than 440 libraries across Europe, um, 40 countries that are uh, presented in the Liber organization. And um, here you have a map, but what is more important is the next map of Europe showing the percentage of where the members come from uh, in Liber. As you can see, the northern countries are uh, much more represented than the southern ones, which you will see presents us with problems within the leadership programs as well. I will come back on that. Um, we try to, together with the library and with the partners, we aim to enable world-class research. And for us, that means collaborative, international, cross-discipline, increasingly data intensive and open. And we do this by um, a, a, a powering sustainable knowledge in the digital age. And these are, we want to be partners. We want to organize hubs for digital skills and services. And we do this by working groups. Um, that's my next slide. Um, we see the research landscape in 2022 as open access, uh, focused on research data, digital skills, and we want to provide our librarians and our uh, co-workers with um, the necessary digital skills to be able to support the research landscape. We want to provide research infrastructure and make sure that everybody has the necessary skills to work with that. And um, of course, cultural heritage is a much important part of um, today's digital information that we have. 
how are we organized? We're organized in working groups and you see, which I don't because it's in here, okay. Um, you see the leadership programs working group as one of the working groups over there. We're a bit out of the ordinary as a working group because we organize a current running program um, and, and continuously running program for um, our emerging leaders and for library directors. Whereas the other working groups mainly um, are temporary working groups working around a certain theme, uh, providing with policy papers or providing with certain skills or webinars, etc. And they end um, after a certain period, which is not the case for the leadership working group. So it's one of the discussions within Libre. Is this the correct way to do and to organize these programs? And by putting so much um, on the working group where we are a different type. We have two types of leadership programs within Libre. Um, we have um, the Emerging Leaders Programme and the, for the library directors, the Libre Journées. What we would like to do is equip librarians to deal with new challenges through strong and effective leadership. We focus within the uh, working group only on leadership programs. As I said, there are other groups dealing with digital skills, more technical skills for librarians. That's not what we um, do as a working group. Our focus is solely on the leadership programs. For the Libre Journées, um, it's a program designed for 20 to 25 library directors. Um, we want them to be already in a leadership position and we want them to be there for some years um, because their focus is on uh, looking ahead and delivering strategic change as libraries and institutions redefine themselves. Um, and so what we would like to offer them is a program where they can come in contact with people from outside the library and even outside the academic world and have a discussion about what are strategic issues that are ahead of us and how can we deal with it and have discussions amongst them, themselves um, and see how they would deal as a library with those things that come ahead. One of the people we have invited in the past is Bruno Patino, uh, the Dean of the School of Journalism at Science Po, but also Karen Wilcox, um, Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics from MIT and the task force of the future of MIT education. So outside of the library world, giving a, a view on their ideas about the future and how libraries could help with that. We've organized um, two journeys up to now, uh, twice in Paris. Once was um, focused on reshape, reshaping the research library and in 2017 on transformation. We planned another one in 2020. We replanned it in 2021, and it will finally take place in May 2022 um, with a team leading libraries in the world of openness. Um, and the focus there will be on the role of the director in leading library services and provision in rapidly changing digital research and educational environments and within a developing trend towards shared and even outsourced services. So I hope it will be a very inspiring session. I hope it will finally take place, um, but I'm very much looking forward for it. Um, we had a lot of library, library directors um, sending in their candidature and so their application, sorry. Um, um, so I hope it will be a very interesting Ouais. A couple of days. Oui, d'ailleurs, Dominique m'en a parlé des fiches de liaison, effectivement, en disant que c'était nécessaire. Um, J'entends quelqu'un parler en français, mais... <laughs> um... The role of the Libre Leadership Working Group um, in this part is the selection of the location, uh, opening the call for the participants and selection of the candidates, and also uh, deciding on the theme and the program. We also include the local host that we think is very important to have them give a view on what's important for them as well. Um, the program chair and um, the chair of the working group were both 
members of the working group of the leadership working group. We also have a number of facilitators that will be present uh, for the breakout rooms, etc. So we decide actually on the total package, uh, both the program and the speakers and the location. For our Emerging Leaders program, we uh, started already in 2011. Um, we aimed originally at emerging leaders in libraries, wanting to become a library director within the next three years. We recently changed that a little bit because we think um, there are not enough places for library directors. So we think there are emerging leaders that can be really valuable within their organization and that are in a senior management position um, and want to take up more responsibilities. We currently are at the sixth cohort with this program and we have more than 100 alumni already of the program. The focus of the program is the training for leadership skills. Um, and we specifically want to do this in an international environment. Um, we wanted to get people out of their institution, out of their country even, to make sure that they had a broader horizon and that they could meet people from everywhere in Europe, I should say, because Libra is focused on Europe. Um, the program should also enable you to create a network of colleagues throughout Europe, and we see that this actually works. Uh, even people from the first cohort still contact each other and still have meetings with each other, so it works to have a program like this. Um, we specifically also want them to have an internship experience of about a week abroad. Um, it should be in another country than your own. And the program itself is run by a library director and an external consultant. Um, the content itself is two seminars of two and a half day. So it's, it's run over one year. It starts at one Libre conference uh, with a live seminar of two and a half day. And then um, there's the mentorship that is involved by another library director during the entire course. And in between those seminars, there's also the internship with your mentor um, outside your own country, as I said. Um, during the year-long program, there are in between online sessions with the coaches on specific topics. Focus is on um, how can I become a better leader? Uh, what's my um, leadership style? Um, does that influence others? Um, but also exchanging experiences um, etc. That is what is within the program. On behalf of the working group, we um, arrange for the call of participants, selection, um, all the practical organization with the help of the Libre office. We are also tutors, so we help the participants in finding the adequate mentor and being in contact for further questions and follow up. We try to combine uh, participant and mentor based on what they would like to learn from their internship, uh, what their interest is. Uh, people from special collections want to go for different type of internships than other um, people who deal with open science, for example. So we try to find the adequate mentor, which takes up quite some time in, in combining people. We also try to maintain an overview of those mentors um, and, and see what their position is, um, and we also gave, gave them um, kind of a guideline what you should expect from a mentor and what a mentor should expect from his participant, um, so that we aligned uh, both ideas a little bit more than in the beginning when we just um, combined the two and then uh, let it go a little bit more. And now we, we try to provide the mentor also with a guideline. This is what we expect from you to do as a mentor, but also for the participant, this is what you can expect from your mentor. Because um, if you follow Richard Overton at the Bodleian Library and you expect him to be there the entire week solely for you, that's not a real um, expectation. So we, we try to to meet those expectations on both sides. Um, what have we seen in the past years? Um, 
we have a large number of participants from northern European countries, and that combines with the membership of Libra, but we would like to change that. We would like to see more participants from the southern countries as well. Um, issues that we have dig up from ourselves is costs, um, the language, because the course is given in English. Um, and sometimes we notice that within the working group, I make sure that we have people from very different European countries so that people can tell me if we get an application and people mention a title, um, that we have somebody who can explain a little bit what this job title means um, in the library. Because we notice that Eastern European countries have a totally different type of um, organization of their libraries as as well, Spain, Spanish libraries, for example, are totally different organized than Scandinavian or UK libraries. So it's always good to have somebody who can explain a little bit, ah, but this means that or that, or, or this is really um, a top position, people, the person is involved in management. Um, so that's something we, we struggle with within the working group to make sure that we deal with everybody on the same base. Um, what we also notice is that, and you heard Joe before me from SILIP, uh, Anglo-Saxon world is used to apply for these type of courses. We see that in their applications, the Southern uh, Europe countries are not, and, and we see the difference in applications. And therefore, you need to be attentive to it, and you need to make sure that you don't just judge on the look of an application, but that you read thoroughly through it and that you contact other persons to make sure that applications are, um, are judged on the same level. Um, one other point we have to be attentive for is that the current coaches who have done this for six cohorts um, will stop. Um, they are retiring and that's their good right, of course, but now we need to find another combination of library director and a consultant who can have the same enthusiasm for the program as they had. Um, and that's something we, we will have to deal with. And of course, there has been Corona. Uh, because we are a working group, it means we are all volunteers. Um, most of us are library directors. We used to have meetings four times a year, but because of Corona and all the postponements that we had to do, uh, we moved up to a monthly online meeting, which was quite a lot of work. Um, as I said before, we had to move the Libre Journées twice. Um, we organized an extra online open event for library directors, embracing uncertainty. What's the impact of COVID-19 on library strategies? Um, and we also had to deal with uh, one cohort that has ne had nearly their entire program online. We arranged for them an extra day uh, this year that hopefully can go through live. And also the cohort six couldn't start as planned in 2021. So we are running behind uh, on our current scheme because of Corona. It also learned us that we have to look at how much we can deal with being a working group within the organization of Libre, or should we try to have a Libre office and more administrative people involved in this kind of organization? Because we, we do realize we do a lot of good work in, uh, and we want to continue with the good work for a leadership program, but we have to look at the way we do it in the future. That was it from my part. Thank you so much, um, Hilde. Um, it's a very ambitious goal because uh, Libre covers so many countries and it's a big region. Um, but it's great that you are interested in reaching out to as many uh, diverse uh, potential candidates as possible, different languages, uh, the process to judge the applications, try to make that more equal. And so that is uh, what it's all about, right? In this type of um, stage. Um, to give more opportunities to people. So thank you so much. Um, and so that was the session uh, featuring library associations. Now we are going to interactive rooms and these rooms will be in different languages. I would like to welcome Magdalena Gomulka back. 
uh, for her and her team to explain it to us. Yeah, thank you, Loida. And so now we would like to invite all participants uh, to discussion in uh, breakout rooms. And we will create four rooms. Uh, two will be with in English, uh, the third will be in French, and the last will be in German. So um, uh, when you will be in the rooms, uh, please turn on your microphone and also your camera, and you will have a moderator of the discussion and a few uh, interesting uh, tasks to do. So let me open um open the rooms oh and a very important message our discussion uh, takes 15 minutes and you will see information uh, one minute before the end that the room will be closed so i okay everything is fine so i'm going to open all rooms and you will see uh rooms and you can choose which one would you like to go? So you can do it on your own to choose to choose the room. Yes, participants scroll down and you will find the languages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so I need to to prepare. You cannot uh, you cannot uh, go to the room, Maria. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We are coming back and then we are going to uh, hear from the hosts of from the uh, interactive rooms. Okay, so there is a time for a few sentences from the rooms. We had four moderators. Oh, I see that everybody come. Uh, Maria Borna, are you? with us now yes yes we're um, here yeah <laughs> okay um if you'd like i can uh begin um, um hello Bor everyone borna uh, you your camera is uh closed oh yes. now it's hello um we had um uh, a very short and uh, interesting um conversation about um leadership and uh what makes a good leader and um, we were talking about the fact that um, uh, a leader is someone that should be uh, involved in all levels and someone and that practically everyone can be a good leader. Um, after that, we discussed something uh, very interesting and that was um, the difference uh, between a manager and a leader. 
and uh, it was very well articulated in the group that uh, a leader is a person that can exhibit um, leadership in every level and in every situation. And we also uh, talked and uh, put the emphasis on uh, the importance of uh, communication and working as a group inside a group. And we just said that it's very important for everyone to um, promote and help each other inside the group. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Barna and Maria. Well, uh, we also have a short discussion uh, in our break room and we have uh, we have talked uh, about uh, what practice uh, shows. So practice shows specific strategy to develop uh, leadership, different uh, mentoring programs. Uh, it uh, could include a diverse population and uh, for example, on every library meeting, uh, uh, everybody has to chance to speak openly and uh, develop its leadership skills. For the recommendation, we have uh, very good ideas such as team building exercise in meetings and in workshops. ICT uh, and social media skills uh, are building relationships uh, on the cloud beyond physical and uh, needs uh, leadership from every level. Uh, uh, needs are that we need leadership from every level and free workshops on native languages, let's say. So this is our conclusion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Maria, for your highlights. Uh, I see that there is Ute with us here. Uh, Ute, could you say a few words about your discussion? Yes, um, we have a, um, mm -hmm. a few sentences from our German speaking colleagues. Um, so good practices, um, there were examples of uh, coaching in a group of leaders um, with, with good, um, a good practice because they can um, share experience and uh, learning from each other as a group of leaders. And um, there were coaching as well for um, each leader of this group. Um, other good practices were um, just take responsibility for a small team to practice to be a good leader for a, for a greater uh, organization like library. So um, start early to take responsibility was a good practice. <laughs> and uh, recommendations are um, just continue to to um, to exchange on international level like IFLA. <laughs> so and what skills are needed? Um, the first thing is communication. I think we, we thought communication is, is basic. Um, so practicing conflict talks to, um, with co-workers are very important uh, and to be at an, um, I don't know how to say it. Uh, is it eye level in Germany? Is, um, yes. And at, so you can talk um, on the same level as an, a leader and um, just try to, to do a conflict talk, but also motivate your co-workers. So that's in short. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Ute, for uh, your speech. And the last one, uh, front room. Uh, Osan, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, Magda. Uh, for, for our room, uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, working to uh, uh, practice and uh, foundation and, uh, and needs, but uh, it's the first time for uh, uh, many uh, colleagues to uh, use this uh, uh, this board, uh, but we, we don't finish it. Uh, so we, we, we can we, we have some uh, uh, some ideas for practice for needed and, uh, and recommendation. Uh, for example, uh, we, we, we uh, for, for practice uh, it's important to uh, to uh, to do a, a training and a share experience for uh, for, for colleagues and uh, for the recommendation we we can uh, we can have uh, some some ideas to uh, to develop it uh, uh, leadership in a, a francophone country francophone country and uh, for 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 need this for 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 for, for need, uh, we we just have uh, some ideas to uh, to do some training for for colleagues 
or uh, do some uh, uh, skills in uh, social media, for example, and uh, to uh, to do uh, 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 tools to uh, electronics libraries, for example. And uh, for this, uh, for, for for all these uh, uh, ideas, we we can have a, a leadership, uh, a good leadership for, for our library uh, in front of uh, thank you, thank you, Manda. Uh, thank you, Asan, and thank uh, thank all moderators for your work uh, and lead the discussion. Uh, we collected all uh, highlights and notes from the sessions, and now there is time for the next part of the session. And I give my microphone to Loida. Thank you, Magdalena, and each one of the uh, people in the team for the interactive rooms. Uh, it's very important for us to include languages that are spoken in the region. So German, French, English, uh, that was very important for us. Um, now let's move to the section where we're going to um, hear um, about the leadership journey and experience from uh, a seasoned librarian new to leadership. And we are going to welcome Mark Jacob Jacobson from Latvia. Hello, thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> um, dear colleagues, I have uh, prepared a, a small speech for you, but uh, at first I would like to share my presentation. So one moment. I hope you can uh, hear me very well. And uh, I hope you also um, see my uh, presentation. Yes. Uh, so, dear colleagues, yeah, uh, dear colleagues, seasoned ones and new ones. Uh, my name is Mara. Uh, I'm from Latvia, and I will give you a short insight in my personal story about my leadership experience uh, to encourage you to follow my example and to move forwards in your leadership, no matter how old are you and how many years you are working in in library field. I saw that in our webinars there are young colleagues and not so young colleagues. My example is uh, for, uh, for, uh, for you all. So let's move forward. Um, I'm in library field already at least uh, 20 years. Uh, I have bachelor's and the master's degree in library and information science and have acquired uh, not any special leadership programs. Uh, all what I have achieved is done on my own and, mis and with my work. Uh, I've started uh, with a work uh, with a card and electronic catalog and reader service. Uh, then I was a head of a medical college library a few years. And a bigger turn began uh, when I started to work in our national professional magazine, The World of Libraries. Uh, then with diverse duties in the Library Advisory Center and the Library Development Center in the National Library. Uh, almost two years, I was ahead of the Library Development Center. And at that time, I've got a fellowship for a participation in my first IFLA Congress in IFLA in Columbus, United States. Uh, but gave me a very hard push that I can move uh, forward with my uh, dreams and my initiatives. And this resulted um, in my election as a president of the Library Association of Latvia. And I'm a very clear example that also a simple librarian like me uh, can be a president of the library association. And not always you have to be a big director or big manager uh, to hold this position. Uh, but uh, nothing stands still. And in May this year, I will start my next challenge. I will start to work as director of uh, Jurmal Central Library. It's uh, one city in Latvia, and uh, I don't know what will happen, but I will try and let's see. So let's move forward. Um, here you can see my motivation. Uh, at first, uh, it is an interest in my job and profession. I just cannot work if I'm not interested in that what I'm doing. Uh, my habitude is also continuous development and self-realization. My best feeling is satisfaction with achievements and exchange of thoughts and ideas. 
uh, I very appreciate a support from my colleagues and like-minded um, people. And uh, like most people in the world, I'm looking for meaning of my life, and um, which I find in the balance between a family and professional life. I have two uh, wonderful children, which make happy every my day, uh, um, additionally to my uh, work life. Uh, so uh, here you can see uh, some tips from you. Um, first of them is um, let's dream and work hard uh, to make your dreams to come true. And under, I underline uh, the words work hard. It's not enough to dream. It's uh, you have to work hard to fulfill your dreams. It's uh, very important. Be brave. Believe in yourself and do not give up no matter what happens. Don't fight alone, build a team. Be open to change and challenges. Do not stay in routine. Uh, every routine uh, are killing um, uh, any, any success. Uh, have a good sense of humor. It's very important. And listen to your intuition will always show a right direction. And if you have any questions, listen to yourself, your, to your inner voice, and uh, your inner voice will tell you what to do. Uh, special advice uh, for directors and managers. I know that is a problem sometimes with directors and managers, uh, therefore I, I would like uh, to tell that uh, please, uh, all directors and man managers, please support your employees in their professional development and ideas. Uh, maybe at um, first time uh, do you think that it is not a good idea, but uh, after that uh, you and your institution will only benefit uh, from this um, power which it uh, will be in, uh, in the hands of your employees. And advice for everyone, use professional NGOs as, le as leadership pla platform, get involved, active never stop to grow, not only vertically, what is one um, direction, but on, also horizontally. It's also very good to grow also horizontally. Uh, so well, let's move forward. And here you can see a map uh, with a point um, in a place of my childhood. Uh, under it, you can see a way of a shy girl from a country yard to, to the IFLA Congress and other face-to-face -face online events on the library field stage. Maybe someday I will write a book about my life. I don't know it, but I suppose uh, this book could be very interesting and inspiring for many people who need a little push to dare and to realize dreams. So, and finally, uh, and uh, at the conclusion, uh, I have three things um, which I want to give you to take from my short presentation. Um, firstly, uh, enjoy a risk as a jumping in a cold water. Um, don't scare about it. Uh, secondly, feel the um, adrenaline uh, like in a skateboarding. And uh, thirdly, um, always show the power of your profession. Be being a librarian is not a shame, it's a power. Please uh, um, be brave and show it to all people uh, around. So thank you. It's at the moment all. I will stop my presentation. Maybe, maybe you have some questions. <laughs> Mara, thank you so much. That is such an injection of a powerful energy. Um, wonderful. And um, I just have so many things I like from what you said, but I, um, I just wrote a couple of things only. Think unthinkable, do incredible. Uh, don't fight, build a team. And for the manager, the administration to support employees in leadership and their ideas, and lastly, you said anyone can become a library uh, president of the library association. So it's so wonderful. Thank you so much. We are refreshed and re-energized by your talk. Uh, now I will include, uh, I will uh, welcome Francisca Weber from Germany. Hi, thanks, Lada. Um, so let me share my screen with you. Um, yeah, thank you. And I'm very honored to get the, the chance to speak to all of you today. And it has been a very interesting session so far. And uh, thank you, Mara, that was really inspiring. 
Um, so le please let me introduce myself uh, very shortly. Um, I got my bachelor's degree at the University of Applied Science. I worked in academic and public libraries, um, lastly at the public library in Cologne. And now I'm back at the University of Applied Science um, and working um, in advanced training, uh, especially for librarians. Um, in, back in two, uh, 2014, um, I co-founded the New Professionals for the Association of Information and Library here in Germany. And I was a chairwoman from uh, 16 to 21 for this uh, uh, group. And since last year, I represent the BEB at the BE International. So being a new librarian in, in Germany, um, you see in the picture here, that's uh, the original group. Uh, I said that before we um, founded the new professionals um, at the German Library Congress um, in, in Bremen. And the first order of business was changing the name from young professionals to new professionals. Um, why? Yeah, because we not only want to be there for the young librarians, but for everyone who is new to librarianship. So if you have worked um, the last 20 years in a totally different profession and just started a, a job or um, started studying um, now, um, yeah, it's fine for us and, and we are still your go-to guy, uh, so to speak. And we had a meeting a uh, few weeks later and the first uh, things we um, get done was um, to find out what is our target audience, um, what is our main goal to, to conducting support and assistance, gaining new members, of course, um, networking and um, providing events and uh, for our audience. Um, yeah, such as events at the book fairs in, in Frankfurt and Leipzig, or our speed dating events um, at the German Library Congress, which we host every year. Um, and that's a great uh, chance for networking for everyone. So, yeah, as I just said, uh, events and networking, you can see um, in the picture uh, um, back in, in Leipzig uh, three years ago now, uh, where we had a, a info booth at the book fair. Um, yeah, we did job application trainings um, where you could come with your resume and we look it over and um, yeah, help to modify it. Um, of course, there are always duties for the association where we represent um, our audience. Um, and we had a few joint events with e-learning professionals, which was always great and lots of fun. And um, during the pandemic, we had sessions at the so-called um, VBIP, um, which we held online um, also with eFly new professionals. Um, and during that time, we um, did a lot of online get togethers for different librarians um, and students with um, any from any university in, in Germany who had librarians, uh, librarian students, um, yeah, to provide a little bit um, discussion during um, the time of COVID. So the leadership path um, we took, you saw uh, us in the pictures uh, three slides before. Um, yeah, and it was a great experience for all of us. Um, so there was only um, at BEB, there was only the name Young Professionals and a budget. And we had the chance to build the new professionals um, yeah, from, from the ground up. Um, that was really awesome. We could um, build anything we thought, uh, offer everything we, we thought the community needs. Um, we had various tasks with more responsibility than you usually have at uh, that young age. So we started like with 21 to 25. So that was great. We got the chance to speak at events in front of large crowds, um, 
which was always a good uh, training, um, also the so training for motivation and confidence in that new responsibility. So um, yeah, you get the confidence to do your master degrees, um, to apply for the new leadership um, shop, uh, job. We got the chance to meet a lot of people um, by networking and learning a lot of things by doing so. Um, yeah, learning by doing, as I said before, we built the new professionals from the uh, ground up. Um, and yeah, that was sometimes a little bit challenging, but um, I think we all learned a lot uh, from it and everyone um, did get a higher position in the last um, few years. So my colleague from Munich, for example, she is in, in charge of the um, mobile library now. And um, two of my colleagues um, are the head of the librarian in, in their small cities. And um, yeah, we started studying for our masters and so on. Um, yeah, we had to work as a team, um, which was a great, chance to to do so um, also with our board um, and we are used to remote work that was really helpful during the last um, during the last two years so since we are spread all over Germany um, it was totally normal um, for us to work yeah we are we are zoom and with collaborative tools and so on so all in all I'm confident to say that without this experience over the last few years, none of us would be there where we are today. Um, and we are grateful every day for this opportunity we had. And um, yeah, last year we, we gave the new professionals into new hands. And I hope that um, the one new professionals um, today get the uh, same experience as we did. So that's all from me. Thanks so much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please feel free um, to uh, contact me. I put my contact info down here. So, Noida, do we have Thank any you. questions in the chat? I see. 10 messages but i didn't have the chance to read it <laughs> i think uh our attendees are having conversations among okay themselves. good <laughs> so that is wonderful and they actually um they are uh, uh mentioning something that you said and, and i think this is a highlight that the um the name went from young professionals yes. to new professionals. And that is very inclusive because there are many people that come to our profession. <laughs> it might be the second or third uh, profession that they yeah. uh, career. And so uh, that's so important. And other notes I have from your talk, uh, thank you, um, is that you um, remain active during the pandemic online and you have different activities and webinars and activities for yourselves to stay kind of like connected in the group and continue building that team. Um, and um, the other thing is that you learn by doing, and this is so important, right? Um, you were uh, learn to speak for large crowds, organized events, and had a uh, teamwork. And then this is very beautiful. I've seen this in my life as well when, when I was a new professional. Um, and how these experiences help you and you know i mean you your team uh to um have promotions and to move up in yeah. your career so Absolutely. you move in into the career then you move on to this group and then you move up and so that is wonderful it's a beautiful example yeah. and so it's a it's a little bit like mara uh, said before to jump in cold waters it, uh, does uh, feel a lot of times like that, like you had to to just uh, jump into uh, something, but yeah, in, in the end, it always turned out great. And um, yeah, it really helped all of us to get there where we are today. Beautiful example. Well, thank you so much. And um, thank, thank you. you to all our speakers today. 
um, we have uh, gathered more information and uh, really are inspired to continue uh, with these webinars. Our, our next webinar, and we will have, um, if um, Magda, Lena can share the last uh, slide. Our next webinar will be in May and uh, it will be other regions of the world. We have to confirm them, but uh, you can stay tuned to the IFLA list, uh, to Twitter, IFLA uh, MLIS using Twitter and also on Facebook. And uh, we will share the recording of the sessions on these uh, communication channels in the next uh, news for the other webinars. We'll they have the MENA region, the Sub-Saharan, Asia and Oceania and Latin America and Caribbean. Thank you so very much to the speakers and to all of you that um, joined today and participated in the interactive rooms. And we will see you again, hopefully, uh, in May for our next webinar. Thank you. <laughs>